close out, my condolences go out to everyone who's lost a family member, a friend, or somebody you know during this terrible pandemic. We lost a lot of people, loved ones. Some have lost their jobs. But we still have Jesus. Yeah. With that extra time on your hands, why don't you recommit yourself or establish a relationship with the Lord God Almighty through His Son Jesus? Instead of warring yourself to death, the Bible says that fear have torment. That's right. But the Lord, He'll set you free. He'll set you completely free. And today our lesson is going to be set the trumpet to thy mouth. And that's taken from Hosea, the eighth chapter. Let's go there today. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. And the Lord is telling us in this last and final hour or two, we have to sound an alarm because there's so much false doctrine in the land. We have to sound an alarm that God's hand is moving like never before. We have to sound an alarm that it's time to make our way to the cross. It's time not to walk to Calvary, but to run. Yes, this is an hour that we need to run for our souls. And from one of my favorite books, From the Inside Out, I'm going to be elaborating just a little bit from one of the chapters here. Pulpits with the absence of God. But again, the name of our lesson today is Set the Trumpet to Your Mouth. Warn the people about what's really going on. Actually, I think that I will start in Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter today. Let's go there. And I'm reading today from the Amplified Version. And if you have, I enjoy the Amplified Version, but I always read it in conjunction with the King James Version. So I like the way that that author puts forth the text. But I've been traveling long enough through the Word of God to be able to balance them both. And if you're not sure about that, Jesus, thank you. then you had better stay with the King James Version. But I like going back and forth. I like to read them both. So today, again, I will be reading the Amplified Version, Jeremiah 23. And again, we're talking about set the trumpet to thy mouth. You know, it's a scary time, but it's a good time for the Lord. So many people have died. So many people. I was listening on the on the news and. For those of us who may have had to file unemployment, some people still can't even get through on the line. That's right, amen. It's time for us to turn to God. Yes. And you know, we are attempting to listen to science and the leaders of our government to direct us. But they are not, they not in harmony with one another. Amen. Amen. One will say this and the other person will say that. That's and if right. one person doesn't agree with the the hierarchy, then they get fired. Amen. We need to turn to God. And even some of the churches, their dilapidated view of how things should be done. Their miser perspective of our God during this time. He's greater now than he has ever been. Why? Because he's always been great. chapter, you stay here with me in Jeremiah. In Hosea, chapter 7, the Lord, in chapter 6, the Lord was trying to warn them that their final warning was coming. Hmm. He was trying to tell them to set their house in order because judgment was coming. Just like in the Old Testament days, the same will be said about our generation. That's, That's right, right. Reverend. First warning and then destruction. Yes. 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 
God has given, had given them so many opportunities to turn to him, to honor him, and to respect him. And you know when this COVID situation first erupted and people are still battling about when it started, God knows the exact day, the minute, the moment it began. Mm. And he knows the day, the minute, the moment when it will end or when they will find a um, answer for what's going on today. But even now, we have been a couple of months into the situation we are in, but already people's minds have revert, reverted back to selfishness mm -hmm. and arrogance. Yes. People are so brought to their knees, so to speak. Yes. They were forced to honor God. that they had not reverenced in the past. Their knees were about, brought down to the ground because they had no way to take care of themselves. They were forced to lie prostrate on the floor to give God the glory because they didn't know where they would get the medicine for the children. And now because of the stimulus, now because of the additional money you get when you file unemployment, Mind you, I'm not taking away from how people are suffering. It's a horrible time. But for some of you, 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 you found your way around a little bit. You see through the keyhole a little sun is beginning to shine in your life. And just like the ten lepers, God touched you and he moved for you. But now instead of that one, you have become the nine. Reverting back to the true spirit that's in your heart. You refuse to honor God. The devil has deceived you because the only thing that can make you see the truth and how great and how majestic our God is, is the truth that's in God's word. Yeah. And so while you saw the light shining, the light still shines. When you got on your feet, you turned away from it and said, I did this. You, you accepted, you adopted the mentality of King Nebuchadnezzar. But for me, he said, set the trumpet to your mouth. It's something when the pressure is on, when, when a person's foot is on your neck, when you're up against the wall, when the pressure is on you. You go about temporarily. But see, if the change doesn't happen in your heart, you're going to revert back. Study the word of God as a reference. How many kings, how many men and women, boys and girls of God that he used that soon as that light that he put in front of them as a, a, a king or a prophet, soon as that person died, they, they went back to the old way because that old way was still in them. How was it that the children of Israel knew that Aaron would be the one that would build them a golden calf after crossing the Red Sea? After that terrible, 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 yet awesome, great, magnificent last plague of the death of the first one, first one. And now we see here in May of 2020 that the young, they have not been spared. That's it, Robert. That the children, they have not been spared. Set that trumpet to thy mouth. And when you have a trumpet in your mouth, you are doing one. You're going to blow and sound the alarm that Jesus is on his way back. And again, in the Amplified Version of Jeremiah 23rd chapter, it says, Woe be unto the pastors. Underline that your Bible is a workbook. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel against those pastors that, that feed my people. You have scattered them. You're the reason why they, they won't accept truth. Mm -hmm. Go with me to Acts 8 chapter. I want to read it to you. I want you to hear it for yourself. Let's go there. Acts the 8th chapter, 
It says, and in fact, it says, then Philip. Can you say then Philip? Then, then Philip. Philip. Then Philip. Then Philip. So that means a lot of things happened before they got to the then. It says in Acts 8, verse 5, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, and what did he bring them? He brought them Jesus. He didn't bring man's traditions or their theories or their philosophies. No, the word says that he brought them Jesus Christ. It says now in verse 6, and the people were what? One accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Not only did they hear the word, but because the word was spoken in truth, the Lord, God of the word, was able to manifest himself because his word had been preached. And the word went forth to heal and deliver the people. <laughs> the light still shines. What's that light? It's the, the truth. truth. Yes. Yes. Let's read that again. I'm getting happy off two verses. Maybe it'll take a chapter for you, but it could take two words. It said, eight and five. Then Philip went down. That means a lot of stuff happened before we got to the then. Yes. He went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. Not at them, not, not above them, not beneath them, but to them. That's right, and the people were one accord. Now you got to think about this. And the people were one accord gave he all of a sudden. If you could see a mass people standing here and they all just start looking this way. It was different. Because they had heard false doctrine. They had been bewitched. And the people who are in false doctrine, they came, they carry the same spirit as a sorcerer. They carry the same. It says it bewitching the people. It's right here in the word of God. I'm not, I'm not making this up. He says, with one accord, the people gave heed unto the things which he spake, and they heard, and they saw the miracles which he did. Now, some mighty miracles happen. Look at verse 7. For unclean spirits crying with loud voices because the power of God. What was that crying for, Reverend? They had to give up the body. That's right. They had to find a new home because that, that tabernacle had yielded to the power of God. Yes. 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 And if you're bound today, you can be free. That's right. If you cry out from the abundance of your heart, oh God, and mean never to go back down those dark paths again, he'll set you free this day. Yes. This day. Yes. 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 Many of you are being plagued by these same unclean spirits, but you hear their voices, they have possessed you, and you're battling within yourself. You have tried to stop sinning. You have tried to stop smoking. You have tried to stop committing adultery. You have tried to stop murdering, killing people, but there's no power to help you. That's right. I bring you Jesus. I bring you Jesus today, and he can set you free. Listen again in verse 7. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice. Now they crying out because they had got used to where they was living. That's right. Have you ever been suddenly cast out? I ain't talking about gave you no notice. But security come to your desk and say, yo. Or have you ever tried to this is one of the things I know? If you log on your computer yet, don't work, that means you out, boo. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. They got that box by your desk. I seen this happen on a job that I worked at before. The people, bless their heart, have put up with so much of this one person's attitude and the way they were acting. To my supervisor, he came in real early in the morning and packed up the person's stuff. So that when they came in, as soon as they hit the floor, he was like, come <laughs> in. They was already packed up. Wow. Has anything ever happened to you that quick? Mm. So notice the devils. They had become so used to taking over their soul. That's right, brother. How many devils can you hold? Your soul is eternal. It can hold all of heaven. Or it can hold all of hell. Right. And so, as I said, my previous co worker, as soon as she put her foot on the land, so to speak, the supervisor said, Come here. And she was out. 
But it says here in verse number 8, it says here, I'm sorry, verse 7, it says that the voice came out of how many? Many. That were what? Possessed. So when you possess, the devil is in your soul. It's right here in the word. Possessed with them. And many that were taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Notice what God brings with his messages. Great joy in the city. Even when he's correcting you, it's great joy because he don't have to tell you That's the right. path you want is dark. That's right. He don't have to tell you that even though you think you're walking in the light, you walk, you stumbling along in the dark. That's right. Isn't that what he said in Revelation? He said you think you're walking in the light, but you're walking in the night. He said in Proverbs, because you don't want my way, you don't want my law, I'm going to turn you over to a reprobate man and make you think all that filth you're doing is all right with me. He said, but at the end of your road, I'll meet you there again. But I'll be a different God. That's right. I'll be a different God than the God that's offering you and extending his hand out to you today. He'll be a different God. A different God that has made a way that even though you had some symptoms of COVID, COVID didn't take your life. Yes. He's going to be a different God. Come on, yes, right. And even though you were short of breath and maybe you couldn't even walk. Come on, some of this stuff people that's ain't right. telling you. Come on. Yeah, that's right. He healed you. He's going to be a different God. He's going to tell you, tell his angels to give you death to drink because you deserve it. Yes, yes, yes. Notice here again in verse 8. It says, and what? And there was great joy in the city. He says, but what does verse number 9 say? That first word, but. There was a certain man called Simon. He is type and shadow of the false prophet. Who before time had in the same city. Notice this, notice this, notice this. This is so great. He said, which before time in the same city, you sorcery and bewitch the people. Same spirit that false prophets have. The same spirit that false prophets have. He says, which before time in the same city, use bewitchery and sorcery the people of Samaria giving out, they thought he was someone great because they saw miracles. But the devil can perform miracles, but he cannot heal because healing is life. That's right. Right? Amen. Amen. It said, and to them, they had regard because what? For a long time he had been seducing them. Do you get that in your Bible? It says in verse number 11, they gave him regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But they had to do something in verse number 12, no matter the state they was in in 11. He said, but when they believed. It says when they believed. Now let's go back to that scripture I wanted to read for you. Jeremiah 23rd. He says here, let's see what verse we're on now. Let's read verse 2. He said, Therefore, thus said the Lord, God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away. You have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, said the Lord, and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whether I have driven them, I will bring them again to their foes, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them that shall feed them, that shall let their mouth become a trumpet, and they're going to blow the truth. They're going to sound the alarm. They're going to keep on telling them, no matter the threat. They're going to keep on telling them if they're incarcerated. They're going to keep on telling them if there's threats of danger. They're going to keep on telling them if the world sets up a, a fiery pit. They're going to keep on telling if they set up lions of them because if you look yeah. in the fiery furnace it was a fourth man in there. If you look in where the lions of them I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them and they shall fear no more. Why are people afraid? Because they're not getting the truth. The truth makes you calm. The truth settles you down. The truth gives you peace and allows you to sleep at night. 
when you're afraid something is something is missing. People get up to sing, they're afraid because they haven't practiced. That's right, that's right. So they're afraid of the next word, the next step, because they're not ready. But when you're ready, it drives out fear. Amen. The Bible says to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Some of you are, you just worry about every disease. You're not trusting God, you might have a heart attack. That's right, Amen. right. Amen. It says, man's heart will fail them because of fear, looking upon what? Things on the earth. Yeah. And you can talk yourself into cancer. That's right. Come on, That's so right. Can. Tell it. That's right. You can. But you got to trust God. Yes. You got to trust God. These, these, these are testing times. Yes. These are testing times. And you know, we can only have 10 people here, and we always invite like around 13 because three or four don't never show up. But they say they miss the church. Say it, Reverend. That's what they say. What could keep you from this place today if, right. if you can make it? I mean, it's only 10 of us in here now, I believe, if 10. Amen, We're following the government's rules. But if you can't be here, yes. but you're not. So every week we, we go through a little list. We got some people that live far away, so we tell them, we'll wait till the numbers increase. I don't want you to drive two hours. Amen. Amen. That's right. right. But I see the young line today. I, 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 yeah. 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 Just looking for any reason. Some of you scared of your own shadow. Mm -hmm. And something is wrong with that. That's right. And people try to tell me or insinuate that I'm too strict. That I'm too hard. That's right, but that's why we have miracles and healings and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Behold, verse 5, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute justice judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Therefore behold the days come saith the Lord that they shall no more say the Lord liveth which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt but the Lord liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whether I had driven them they shall dwell in their own land. Verse 9. My heart within me is broken, says Jeremiah. Because of the false prophet, I said false. The Bible says prophet, I said false prophet. It made me feel good when I was reading it. Because <laughs> I knew that's who he's talking to. Because yep. a true prophet, a true leader ain't going to break God's heart. Heart, he there cheering them on. Let him have it. Slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and 
and fall therein, for I will bring, I will, I will, I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesy and bail and cause my people to err. What is he saying here? That people trust what a person behind the pulpit is saying, rather than thus saith the Lord. People are trusting with a man or a woman, and now they're saying it's little kids. I'm not saying your anointing ain't on, on a child's life. I'm not saying that. But the Bible says we can use Jesus as our example. When Jesus was a child, I think I want to say 12, he was in the temple of Mary, and Joseph had been looking for him for three days. And the Bible said that when she found him. She said, where you been? He said, do you not know I must be about my father's business? But he reported and he moved back and gave himself into the arms of his parents until he was of age. And he had learned something. I'm not saying God can't use a child. But come on, let's make sure this ain't entertainment. That's right. Entertainment tonight. Entertainment this afternoon. Amen. Entertainment on Monday. We're doing so many things. The church has turned into an entertainment center. Yes, they We're looking for every way. I don't know why I said we. Because right. we ain't doing that here. Praise <laughs> Come on, Reverend. Amen. I got a new song coming out called Two or More. That's all we need. Mm. Two or more. Because <laughs> with two or more holy people, he's here. Amen. With two or more holy people, we can have this. With two or more holy people, we can rejoice. He said if one can chase what? Then two can do what? Put 10,000 on the fly in case you don't know that script. You gotta get the scripture books back out. <laughs> Notice this indictment against Israel's civil leaders. <clears throat> Look how what deplorable conditions they left the people of God in. And isn't it ironic that some of these religious people have died of the COVID? Yes. Hmm. Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say it. Say that's right. <clears throat> yeah, right. The true body, right? Yeah. True. Everybody that call on God ain't call of God. Come on, Reverend. Remember now he said, that's right, I know it, I know it, I know it. Anyway, remember when he said, tomorrow, Cora, <laughs> God going to show up and show out about who really is he. That's right. Amen. God going to show up and he going to show out. When God is in a man's life or a woman's life and they preaching the truth, there will be miracles. It is not God's will that any of his people should perish from this COVID-19. Yes. It is not his will because healing is a children. Yes. Yes. How is it 
said that our nation, the United States of America, is in the state we find ourselves in today. False prophecy. People have turned their noses up at God. They don't want to live right. They don't want to be right. They don't want to live holy. And God has hit everybody. Don't let people fool you. They might be talking a bad game, but they praying. Yeah. They might be praying out of desperation, but they praying. Amen. Some of these big churches ain't had nobody in the seats. They got 150 people on staff. That's right. That's right. They praying. Maybe for the first time, some of them is praying. Don't don't let them fool you. They on the phone. They got a lit. They got arm bearers. On the phone calling people. You going to send your money? You send it in your tab? We can take it right now over the phone. They got a new church building. That's right. And the mortgage don't stop. It does. That's right. It does. This little church is so small. We just your local neighborhood church. That's it. With a little something, something. We come here one day out of the week now, in this, in May. But from March and, and what was that, April, I think it was, we couldn't be here, but we still had to pay the rent. That's right. Amen. I asked the landlord, I wouldn't say his name, but I asked the landlord. He said he need, he said a whole lot of stuff, but you know what it equals? You know what you go two plus two? That equals that? I need my money. That's right. Yep. He said he need our rent to pay his mortgage. And we might as well say we're in a recession. Oh, yes. Yes, amen, brother. Oh, yes. But with all that's going on, this is the greatest hour for God. Because when people don't have, they start looking to the one who has. <laughs> yes. When people are sick, they start looking to a deliverer. Oh, you don't hear me. Amen. You done slipped in your ear, took your ear mug, your ear things out, your ear plugs out, <coughs> your hearing aids out. So, false prophets. The false prophets had a huge, have a huge enthusiastic audience and were very popular. They made the people believe that everything was going to be all right. How can everything be all right with the number, the escalating number in unemployment? How can everything be all right with the number of people dying, but yet the people are crying, they need money, they need the, the city, they need the state, they need everything open back up so they can make money. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. I ain't saying you ain't got to have money. That, that, I ain't, don't take my words out of context. We all need money to survive. Amen. Amen. But he said, if my people, who are called by my name, if they would seek his face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, I heal the land. Don't we need a healing in our land? Yes. Yeah. These people on speed dial in terms of trying to come up with a vaccination. We got to turn back to God. That's the thing. Yeah. And those leaders, you have to tell people the truth. No matter, this has been a learning experience for me. I want to tell you. This has been a learning experience for me. And most churches who are out there listening to us, yo, yo, best of you is probably bigger than our whole church. Mm. But one thing we will not do, we will not leave God. Amen. We will not change the way our services are. That's we will right. not reduce our standards. That's right. We will not come down off the wall. Yeah. Four signs of a false prophet of the characteristics. They appear, now this is a notation in this Bible. Can I tell y'all that? I didn't write this. This is a notation in this Bible. Yeah. It's so amazing. I thought I couldn't keep it to myself. Yeah. Yeah. These are four warning signs of false prophets, their characteristics. Look, I'm gonna be on the lookout now. Don't look down, don't look at nobody now. Just 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 kind of keep yourself here. 
<laughs> they appear to speak God's word, but they don't live according to his principles. That's it. That's yeah. right there. They preach in righteousness, but they live ungodly lives. <laughs> They tell you the soul that sin and shall die, but yet they they, they are that sinner which shall die. Come on, somebody. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yes. They water down God's message wow. like in order to make it more palatable. It, it, it make it pacify the, the listeners. Yeah. Don't want them to stop giving. That's right. Don't want them to stop coming to the church. Now we gotta fill up the pews. So they water it down. God knows that we all sinners. Mm -hmm. All you gotta do, all you gotta do is repent, G. What's the good of repenting if you're gonna go back again and do the same thing? And Paul's writing said, you got a big punishment coming. Yeah. Because the truth was preached to you. And even when the truth was preached to you, you already got it set up in your mind. As soon as I leave church, I already got my key to the hotel room. They gonna meet me on Fifth Square, and we going down to Seven Yorks. <laughs> Get it on with their church clothes on. You don't believe people leave the church and go a whore? Yes. You better open it. You better open it. <laughs> Number three, they encourage their listeners often subtly to disobey God. Mm -hmm. Now, where did that come yeah. from? Where, where, where did that come from? Let's go to Genesis 3. I'm going I'm I'm to show you something. Set the trumpet to your mouth. Not in case you forget where, we, where we're going with all this. So let's go back to the Word. Let's, I, I want to show you what. And you know what I love about the Bible? When you can always just go to the first time you heard something and it shed a little bit more light on it. So here I am at Genesis 3. Let's see. One. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. You still watching women? You got your Bible, your pen, your notebook? Good. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said? Challenging the word of God. Amen. Really subtly. Yeah. He couldn't have really meant that, that you can't, you, you can't shack up. Y'all can't live together and have intercourse. I mean, you know, you, you got to see if everything will work out for you. Make a commitment. You ain't never going to commit anyway, even when you say I do. Because no. mm -hmm. you can't wait till you get married for the do. Mm -hmm. Now, the serpent was more subtle, and that devil was rising up in people, too. Amen. He ain't going around with no pitchfork. He in people. Some of them got thousands of devils and hundreds of devils in them. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And they're going to do what that devil tells them to do. That's right. And the woman said, Yea, God has said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Come on your job telling people how holy you are and what you do in the church. They know you. I don't want to have nothing to do with that church you, where, you, where you fellowship. <laughs> Count me out. Because if it's anything like the way you act at work, yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> My pastor texts me every week. She money hungry. You go, you got your tags? You got, do you, do you got the money? You got your tags? Let's examine that. Yeah, amen, Why would I have to text you? Preach, man. Because it's in your heart not to give what belongs to God. Come on. Yes, now. Amen. Why would I have to text you? That's it. Because yeah. you're going to fear God. Maybe I'm just, maybe, I'm keeping you alive. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Why am I texting you and I battle with this? Why am I texting you? Because we've been there for you. That's right. Yeah. You owe God because we've been there for you. When you yeah. didn't have nothing. Come on, let's go back down memory lane. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I saw a photograph. Let's go down. <laughs> <laughs> I preach that. It took me way back. It took me way back. Come on, say it, back man. Down, down. Say it. Yes, Set the trumpet to your mouth. 
You ain't had nowhere to stay. This church was there. Child was sick, didn't know how things were. We was there. Yes. That's right, Reverend. And you know, it's a shame and a disgrace. Yes. We such a small congregation to have to tap you, to text you, to phone you, to give you a note. Don't forget it. Don't forget about God's money. And some of you still ain't given. He said, try me and see while I, while I open up the windows of heaven. All you got to do is read that scripture in reverse. Try me and see what I won't do for you. Yes, yes. Try me and yes. see how I shut the windows of heaven against yes. you. When you don't bring food to his storehouse. Yes. The Lord's playing tip the tap today. Mm -hmm. That's his money. You go to a blood ball church under my voice, you better get that money out your pocket. That's not your money. And you only where you are because he moved for you. You only have what you have because he gave it to you. Yes. You only got the health you got because Preach he gave it to you. You won't get laughed today because he yes. prayed on you. tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we can eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 4, and the serpent said unto her, you're not going down. Yes. They encouraged, number three, their listeners often to disobey God. Ain't nobody live free from sin. They beat Jesus to death, so you have to live free from sin. You curse and bless in the same tongue. God is not your father. Yes. They tend to be arrogant and self-appealing to the desires of their audience instead of being true to God's word. I can't resist it. I got to read this. Now, let me read that again. That was profound. You want something prophetic? I'm going to try to They tend to be arrogant and self-serving, appealing to the desires of their audience instead of obeying, tr being true to God's word. Set the trumpet to your mouth. Let's read this. I'm going to let you go. Listen to this. False doctrine can be found in a Christian world today. It, there it is from the inside out. They're going to cover the book again. Okay, let me get down. Let me, let, let me, I want you to see this. God wants to expose false doctrine to his people so that they can see plainly. Mm -hmm. So that they can see what is really going on. Yes. So they can see his paths of righteousness. So they can see that, that narrow path that he has planned for them to walk. Think about it today. Any pulpit where God is absent is of the devil. And those who live according to false teachings and doctrines, they are captives to Satan. Yet they claim to be of God. They claim to be of God, yet they are not of God because false doctrine is not of God. It was not created by God. It was created by Satan himself. He is the master of the sea, and he has created a doctrine all of his own. What? Within the Christian world. But God wants it exposed. Now, false teachings of the Holy Bible always deny the powers of the blood. Here we go. They tend to be arrogant and self-serving, appealing to the desires of the audience instead of being true to God's word. Now, false teachings of the Holy Bible always deny the power that's in the blood. Nobody can live free from sin is denying the power that's in the blood. Once saved, always saved is denying the power that's in the blood. If you can shack up, fornicate, you can be a whore and still make it to heaven, that's denying the power that's in the blood. For I heard the word say, the soul of sin is in No man, no man, no man, no man shall see his face. That's right. 
That's what the word says. Right? Yeah. Profane pulpits always deny the power that's in the blood in one way or the other. False doctrines always deny the power that's showing up in the blood. And you have to hear them saying the false doctrine. Nobody can live free from sin. That's the biggest lie found in false doctrine. Nobody can live free from sin. It is one of the devil's many antidotes to people who don't want to live right. It's not a message of truth. Jesus came saying, I am true. He said, whom the Son set free is free indeed. Free from what? Not only free from cancer, not only free from emphysema, not only free from COVID-19, but free in your soul, free in your mind, free to be, to live a holy and a pure life. That's the freedom Christ is talking about. Not free to buy a house, not free to buy a job, not free to buy a new job, but free, free in your soul. All they preach is a bloodless gospel. Bloodless, bloodless gospel. In the end, they was our clothes today. Because our ceiling is dripping. Did, did I tell you about this building? You are ultimately the one that is responsible for your soul. Yes. Your pastor cannot get you to heaven. Your church cannot get you into heaven. The only thing that can get you into heaven is the blood of Jesus. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And you got to go away and sin no more. It doesn't matter what you have been taught. It doesn't matter what your denomination teaches. You must make the word of God in your life first and paramount through the blood of Jesus. The blood makes you a member of the spiritual church. The real body of Christ. Any sin, any sin, no matter how small it seems, can never be joined to the body of Christ. To those who are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. How could you ever hold the nail riven hands of Jesus and walk side by side if you commend sin? How would you dare be anything less than pure, clean, and holy in his presence? Jesus is not your sympathizer. He became your substitute and he took your place on the cross. The cross Jesus died on should have been yours and it should have been mine. Me and you. We were guilty, and Jesus was the innocent one. He was the one that stood, stepped up and took our place when we were worthy of death. We should be dead today, but because of his shed blood, we are here today. And how dare you, you false prophet, how dare you, you false teacher, how dare you, you false leader, evangelist, Sunday school, deacon, whatever you think you, think you are, how dare you, what gospel do you have to preach with? The gospel of Jesus Christ is called a New Testament. A testament, somebody died and we inherit the New Testament. What are the grounds, what is the basis for your preaching? Where did you get your articles of ordination from? Even though you got a doctrine of divinity, did you get a doctrine? of holiness and righteousness. Did you get a doctrine of thus saith the Lord? Then you have nothing to preach. God bless you. I'll see you next time.